Right, hopefully you can all see that. Um, so welcome again. Um, so today's session, everybody, is on uh, Canvas and Zoom Refresher, and it's actually a two-part session. So myself and Sarah Patterson, my colleague, will be delivering it in almost two halves. Sarah is actually delivering it remotely. I am here in the seminar room in the Melbourne, and uh, we have obviously a lot of um, uh, online attendees as well. So apart from the welcome, I just want to maybe just give you uh, an idea of ourselves and the team. So there's 12 of us in the team. We actually have two missing here, but um, I suppose these are the people that you'll be interacting with in your tickets and in the training sessions. So maybe good to put uh, faces to, um, to, to those people. Um, and I suppose just to highlight the mode of today. So um, a number of our sessions are actually hybrid sessions, meaning we have both face-to-face -face people in here and uh, people online. So uh, simultaneously delivering to those two audiences. Um, I'll field any questions if they come up here in the room. Um, and also I wouldn't mind, please, if you would uh, use the Q&A feature in Zoom to ask any questions. And I know Lauren and Co will be looking at uh, those as well and fielding any questions to me. Um, so um, basically uh, hybrid learning is, I suppose we're, we're recording it live, it's going to be available afterwards and we have uh, the benefit of the face-to-face -face interaction as well. Um, the Q&A feature, if you don't know about it, it's in the, it's just basically in your toolbar in the bottom there, the Q&A feature. So if you have any questions, throw them in there, or if you have comments as well, or questions, you can throw them on the YouTube stream as well. Um, now, just to give an outline of the session, so we have, uh, this session is tailored towards staff as a kind of a refresher of Canvas and Zoom. So we have accessing and copying module content, obviously, because that's quite seasonal. So that's looking at how we take module content from a previous year, uh, roll it into this year, and then maybe adapt it for, for the current semester. Uh, we'll look at just some tips and tricks for getting started for the new semester. Um, so just the usual stuff, maybe things that we forget quite easily, especially after maybe summer learning loss. Um, there's, there's a few important things to note about this time of year as well, like cross-listing, uh, finding your modules, providing the right information to maybe IT or ourselves, just so that you can get set up. And we're also going to look at um, the start of semester Zoom setup. So that's basically just going to give you a refresher on, on some of that stuff. Um, I suppose the two tools that are core to this are Canvas and Zoom. So Canvas and Zoom have gone through a, we've gone through a tender as a university uh, and both the VLE and the Live learning system Zoom are now actually secured for a number of years across the university after a public tender. So um, basically um, the, the really important thing to note is both of them are tightly integrated, which means for a better teaching and learning experience for our staff and students. Um, and we've worked hard as a department to make sure that that integration provides rich features and seamless features so that the user experience is, is improved throughout. Now you see there with the Canvas and Zoom graphic, there are a number of kind of things that interlink. Um, I guess, you know, from the point of view of, of your day-to-day -day learning if you, and teaching, if you're using Canvas, obviously that would be the predominant platform in that you do all of your uh, hosting of learning materials, your um, uh, you know setting of assignments, uh, setting up calendar bookings, um, grading, and all of that other stuff. Um, obviously, Zoom complements that, so you can use Zoom to deliver live online classes. Um, you can use it to record um, sessions that may be viewed later on by students. So you could almost use it as a screen recording tool. Um, that integration with Canvas is quite useful there. And then you have all of those rich collaboration features like breakout rooms. Um, you have uh, the whiteboard, which is a kind of a relatively new feature or an enhanced feature. And there's a lot of annotation collaboration tools in there as well. Um, just to note in terms of what we as a department or a university has integrated into uh, Canvas, which would be core obviously to the, to the offering in, in terms of um, teaching and learning. Uh, there's a number of Zoom new features. So uh, Sarah 
we'll be covering those uh, next week in a session. We also have um, anti-plagiarism tools, so uh, plagiarism detection tool rather called uh, Original, so that's integrated into Canvas. There's also uh, an e-learning authoring tool called H5P for developing rich interactions. There are other integrations available and they're kind of quite discipline specific, such as numbers for maths uh, and stats. And you have um, Labster, which is a kind of a science uh, based lab uh, integration. Um, there are learning analytics features and they're improving uh, as time goes on with Canvas and with all of uh, the data that's generated from things like Zoom as well for attendance and so on. And back on attendance, then there's digital attendance, uh, a digital attendance tool called Quickly. Quickly is also integrated and available to all staff to use to take in-class assessment uh, where needed. Um, it's important, I suppose, also to note that we have mobile apps, uh, as you'll remember, for staff and students, so they're quite handy. Um, this graphic you might be familiar with, so this is just kind of gives a view of the e-learning infrastructure, I suppose, and, and what's happening and all of the features. And at the center of it, you can see Canvas, so Canvas is the VLE and everything out of that then is integrated via what's called uh, LTI, which is a learning tools interoperability standard. And that allows that rich integration between those two tools. So you have um, the passing over of enrollment data securely. You have the ability to pass over things like calendar entries um, and anything time based, for example, with the likes of, um, of Zoom. Um, Canvas teacher I've mentioned. So good to know, I suppose it's good to know this time of year, this week, um, or earlier last week rather, later last week rather, sorry, um, there was a rollover. This rollover happens every year um, around the start of September. And what that means basically is all of the modules um, that you will be teaching on or, or learning on are created um, at the start of September and all of those modules for semester one, semester two, and semester three are actually on Canvas. So that basically means that you, um, you need to do a small bit of tidying up in terms of the menu um, uh, in Canvas and just customizing the, the modules that you see, okay? So um, for any uh, banner and uh, enrollment queries, you can get on to Web for Faculty. Um, cork at ntu.ie and I suppose that's if you have any queries with relation to uh, any enrollments so if you don't see a module in canvas uh, that's that's the, the reason just excuse me a second I'm just going to close the door so we don't have any background noise there That is the wonder of a hybrid event. You get the background noise of, of, uh, of stuff happening in the corridors and stuff. Anyway, um, so let's move on. So um, I suppose accessing Canvas in Cork is the same as previously. You're logging in using your staff email rather here, not rather than ID. So staff email and um, password. Um, and that's this, the story for a while until you know our systems are merged and we become uh, like mtu.e. I know we have mtu email addresses, but those aren't used to access Canvas and Zoom currently. So that's an important note to begin with. Um, then in terms of uh, the session today, let's run through a couple of things. So I'm just going to point to a couple of articles here to begin with, which kind of give a step by step and are useful. So this one is, is an important one. So accessing and copying module content. So if we go to our help center, which I kind of basically um, say to anyone, if you're looking for any uh, how to's, go to our help center, which is available from our site. If we go to tell uh, .cit.ie forward slash support and you'll be able to see uh, a few options there. The help center is a really great place to find articles that run through different scenarios on how to do certain things. So copying your module content from an academic year to this one. We have it laid out in a scenario here. And so after the rollover, you might want to take modules, access modules from a previous year and roll them into this one. 
So what I'm going to do, so this is the article if anyone wants it, um, Lauren might throw it into the chat there. And what I'm going to do here is just going to stop sharing and I'm going to log into Canvas separately um, so that we can just do a quick uh, run through of what that looks like. Okay, and feel free to put in any uh, questions you have into the, uh, into the Q&A there. Like the benefit of having very, very strong passwords it would take quite a long time to uh, type out, unfortunately, so bear with me a sec. Okay. Okay, so here we are in um, in Canvas. Uh, at the moment, you'll see that there is a, a message in there actually around the rollover uh, that happened, and there are a number of useful articles in there. Um, something that's quite useful um, to do initially is, well, for, for myself even, I, I teach in a module called uh, e-learning authoring, is I'd like to actually bring content from what I did in that previous uh, year. So there's a, a, a bit of content in here that I want to actually move into this uh, this current semester. So what you need to do there is you need to go to settings um, and there's the option to export module content. So this will actually create a package that downloads onto your computer and that you can actually import then into your new module. And you have a few options there in terms of uh, what actually gets imported. So you see there's the module export type. So that's um, that's exporting our module, but there's also um, a quiz. So you can actually export just the quiz um, out, of, uh, out of your um, module as well. So when you create that, it takes um, just takes a few minutes, depending on how much content you have in there. Um, and uh, you can leave the page and you can actually come back to it. Now there's a bit in that, so it's probably going to take a sec. Uh, but once it does um, export, um, it'll be available as a link. Now what I'm, oh yeah, it's, it's coming up there now. So it really depends on how much stuff you have in there. If you have a lot of links, if you have a lot of files and so on, it probably take a bit longer than, uh, than most, okay? Okay, so while that's doing that, I might actually just work from another module export. So that's one from here. And what it does is it actually downloads what's called uh, an ICC file um, or an IMSCC file. This is a kind of a canvas file. Now you can't see this off screen because it's in, um, in the, actually what I'll do here is I'll just share my, my full screen so you can see it all. Um, okay. So when I, oh yeah, here it is, the new export. So when I download that file, I can save that to my machine. Um, and that's a file of 361 megabytes. So you can see that's uh, that's a large enough file. It's probably representative of a lot of activity, a lot of files, a lot of learning materials in a module Easter. So that's downloading away here. Um, and we're nearly up to the point. Okay, so once you have that file downloaded, what you can do is you can go to your modules and uh, all modules, and this shows all of the modules that you're actually um, enrolled on. So you'll see anything that you're enrolled on, um, depending on the semester here. So you see the semester denoted, we see all of the other uh, semesters in there. So we're talking about semester 23, 22, 23. So this is the module I want to bring in. It's obviously um, it's obviously not published as well. So uh, modules are not published by default. So if I go in here, what I can do then is I can go to my settings um, and I can go to import module content. 
Uh, and what you're looking for is a Canvas module export package. There's lots of other stuff in here. So if you were um, bringing in content from another LMS or, or just bringing in different types of files that are e-learning standards compliant, you'd be doing it in here. So I'm just going to bring my Canvas export package. I'm going to choose the file. So that should be in my downloads. Um, and this is where you can specify the type of content. So you can say all content or you can say specific content. Um, I'm just going to leave it at all content. I'm happy enough. Um, you can adjust the events and due dates um, by a year or by months. I'll leave that for the moment because I like to just go through each of them individually. And, and typically, you're going to have a lot of changing anyway in the dates. Um, so import uh, that content. And you can see there's a progress bar for uploading there. And uh, I need to leave that go through before I can actually move off the page. Because that's actually physically exporting um, uh, that, that file or importing that file into Canvas. Have we any questions in the Q&A or in the chat there, folks, or on YouTube while we're waiting? Or anyone in the room here? No. OK. Nothing yet. OK, no problem. So um, that, what that will do is it will run an import. So we've imported the file right now, but it has to actually take a, a few minutes to, to parse that, that import. So we'll leave that run. And what I'll do in the meantime, so you see progress bar happening there. What I'll do is I'll just go back to our, um, our slide deck and just see what, I, what else we're going to cover. So we're going to talk about getting set up for the new semester. So typically, um, people will be starting off with, with a new module, OK? So I'll just go into another module here that I have on my, my list uh, for uh, 20, OK, so this one here. So this is a non-published blank module. So this is what you'll all be seeing. And I guess, you know, from a point of view of how you structure it, there'd typically be a few things we'd recommend. So maybe start to set out your units as weeks, so weeks one to, to 12 or 13, and then start to build out from that. Now, what you can do is you can um, you can start to, um, you can schedule content so it doesn't appear each week, so it's released gradually. It depends entirely on your preference and what you do there, but um, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of a convention in terms of um, organizing your, your topics and your learning material. Um, you can also organize by topic, of course, and that's, a, that's another thing people do. Um, before I, I, I'll move on to Zoom in a few minutes, but just going through a few of the other things here, most of the other stuff that you've seen previously is the same. So you have your syllabus, which is time-based. So you'll see that it, um, it, this will actually populate based on any of the time-based things like Zoom sessions, like assignments, uh, calendar events, or anything like that will appear in the module syllabus which is a really useful tool for students so that they can kind of get a running order of what's happening and so anything you're setting up that's time-based if you have if you know when it's happening like assignments and so on it's great to set that up for your students so that they get a, a kind of a gauge for what's happening you know um chat seems to be disabled if you use the q a michael um that that should work for you um for now and uh, i can kind of interact that way um, so uh, your assignments is the same, quizzes is the same, all of this stuff is the same. New analytics, um, when you click on it, it'll actually generate no information initially because it'll say your data is being processed, come back in 24 hours. So what that means is that we don't actually have any interaction data in our module. So um, we need to obviously start to generate that data. So our, once our students come, in week one um, or week two, um, the, the data will start to generate, the participation will start to generate, and you'll actually start to see some insights in this tool. So currently you're not gonna see anything because both the module isn't published, your students aren't uh, doing anything in there, and you're not doing anything yet in there as well. So um, that's just to note, uh, if you do think it's like an error or anything, it's not an error, it's just, um, uh, just the, the fact that we haven't had any participation data. Uh, Michael, can you can one download multiple files onto one's computer from a module, not to upload into another module? Uh, you can. You can do that either through the, the module interface. 
Uh, I think Lauren might actually post up a, a relevant link for you there, Michael, but you can indeed, okay? Um, the files, pages, people area is all fine. Uh, you have rubrics, so rubrics for assessment, if you, if you use them, they're quite useful. Um, I, I suppose when I'm setting up for a new semester, I tend to think about um, announcements. So uh, one really kind of useful kind of productivity hack when you're using Canvas is to actually schedule your announcements. So you can be quite organized and say, you know, you, you organize maybe a welcome message that comes out to your students at 8 a.m. on Monday morning, the, the first day of semester. You can also schedule um, assignments or an announcements for different parts of your semester. So maybe something around an assessment, something around some group activity, things that you have planned for your uh, 13 weeks. Um, and you can also obviously record video messages, which are, which are quite a nice tool actually, if you're going into your announcement, um, you can go into the body of the announcement in your rich content editor and go into uh, upload, record media. And that's where you actually can um, record media into um, into here. Now I'm not going to do it here because I only have one webcam to work with. So, but you can actually record um, your uh, a video message or an audio message for your students. So that's quite a nice uh, thing to do. And obviously within Canvas as well, you have audio and video commentary that you can add to assignments. So that's quite a nice way of adding rich feedback and also maybe summary feedback for an assignment. So you might go through all your written feedback. And there might be a summary that you might add at the very end of it, for example. Um, thanks for posting that in there, um, uh, Lauren. So um, otherwise, you have um, your settings in here. So settings are useful from the point of view um, of, um, I'll just go in here. Actually, yeah, just cancel that for a second. Uh, if I go into my settings, I can, uh, con I, I can configure my navigation. So one important thing when it comes to importing content from previous years is um, you might not see the Zoom uh, menu item. Um, you might not see items in the same kind of order that you had or that you would require to have for this current semester. So obviously with your navigation, you can go in here and you can order your menu items and you can disable stuff that isn't relevant as well to your students. So um, uh, the technology enhanced learning team pushes down what's called a blueprint every year. So that went out on this rollover pre, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And that actually sets up the menu in a default way for all staff and students. Um, now you're free to, to customize it, but it's kind of based on best practice in terms of what you need and what uh, people don't need to see as well, obviously. Um, there's a tool in here called Quickly, if you ever want to use it, that's the Quickly Attendance tool. So I'm not sure if people are interested in using that. That tool is, um, it basically allows you to take in-class assessments. So um, it's, it's worth a look. Um, there'll be training on it. There is already material on our, our help docs if you're interested in looking at that. If you want to reach out to us on edtech at MTU as well, uh, if you have any queries on it, let us know. But basically it allows you to take either manual attendance or for you to open up attendance for your students to check in. So that might be useful instead of maybe using paper in the classroom. Um, so that, that's those things in, in Canvas. Um, I'm just gonna go back and see if there's anything. Okay, cross-listing is another one. So cross-listing is quite an, an important thing that happens this time of year. And what it basically means is you're, um, if you're teaching the same subject, same module to multiple groups in the same semester, you might want to actually just combine um, those groups into, into one module rather than repeating all of the learning material uploads and activities. Uh, and so cross-listing is quite common um, in, in the university. Uh, what you need to do though is, I suppose it's important that you, put, that you articulate the request to the TEL team um, uh, accurately because sometimes there can be um, errors, if not, in terms of what's uh, merged and what's not merged. So there's an article on cross-listing. Basically, um, you have to find the SIS ID of your module, and I'll show you how to do that. But basically what you do is you nominate a parent and a child, the same as a parent-child relationship in real life, that you just, they're linked then, uh, and they're, they become one module or one family. 
Now that can happen for simultaneous modules as well. It can happen for a parent module with two children, three children, etc. Um, so that's what that is. The SIS ID you actually find in your settings. So if you go in here into module details, uh, you have your SIS ID in here, and that's what you quote basically to um, to us in in Intel or to IT services if you're quoting. Um, this is the unique ID for your module. So you know you have your CRN. A CRN is typically this middle number here. So that's the 24996. And everything else around that, that's the module code and that's the year of delivery. So this is the unique handler identifier for your module. And, and that's really important to just to, to know. And that's where you find it, the SIS ID. So that's what you use when you're putting in a request for cross lists. And, and you know, once you follow that guide, um, uh, a member of our team will cross list uh, typically within the day. We have a lot of requests coming in right now. Um, it's a qu pretty busy season for uh, cross listing, but um, just bear with us um, and there should be no problem there. Um, I'm just wondering there, do we have any other, do we have any other questions, first of all, from anyone? Um, happy to take any specific questions while I'm in Canvas. We do have a, a kind of a Zoom portion to this as well, and I'm happy to revert back to, to Canvas if people have any specific questions. Just put them into the Q&A in the bottom of the, of the screen, there, okay? Now, Sarah, how are you fixed? Would you mind if I switched over to the Zoom portion so we can yeah. do it? If you stop sharing, I'll start sharing it, yeah. This is Sarah Patterson, everybody. She's gonna- I think you have to give me access, sorry, to share. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, got it. Yeah, perfect. And I'll be monitoring the Q&A there, everybody. One second now. And should be here. Perfect. Okay, so I'll, I'll discuss Zoom in Canvas first. Um, so as Shane says, you can access Zoom from within Canvas, and this is where your students and you will launch your classes and also where you'll schedule them. So I'll go over, I'm sure you probably know a lot of this, but I'll, I'll focus in on certain things, how to schedule a class. So as you probably already know, you'd be scheduling, you know, if your class is one hour, two hour, and um, if it's recurring. So if you're doing 12 classes the same of the same in the same module, um, you can have it recur for 12 times. Um, and that's really helpful. Um, and also this one important thing to focus on here in under security is um, the authentication. So you might have a module where you're going to have an external lecturer that's not doesn't have an MTU email or a CIT email address. So you might want to change um, because by default, all the meetings are only um, MTU Cork students and staff. But if you want to have external people, they can be under all authenticated users. But the only thing with that is uh, for MTU calls, you still have to have a Zoom account. So you can't just log in as a guest. Everybody has to have a Zoom account to join these meetings. Uh, and I'll move down to meeting options. So one thing you can do is set up your meetings to record automatically. Now, this is something that we wouldn't say you have to do. And especially if there's like chat or if you're setting up at the beginning of your meetings, you might not want to do this. It might be better to just remember to click record it when you're starting your slides or whatever. And um, we also have, um, there's breakout room pre-assign. So this is something we have a lot of um, documentation on in our help site, but basically you can pre-assign if you have all your students in a CSV file. So like an Excel file, you can pre-assign breakout rooms if you know they're gonna do some sort of discussion or project work within your Zoom session. Um, also, if there are multiple lectures on the module and they're both going to be um, lecturing, you might want alternative hosts. This is where you'd push someone's email. So Lauren already is down as an alternative host because she's another uh, teacher on this module. I think that's it for Zoom in uh, Canvas, Shane, unless there was anything else you wanted me to cover. Um, I guess just in terms of Zoom, um, the Zoom client, I suppose, to move on to that. Yeah, I'll move on to that, yeah. 
so what I'm going to do first, actually, before I open the meeting I have set up is remind you, since you probably haven't signed into Zoom in a while um, for, for lecturing, is to check for updates. So I just did this before the session and I did have an update myself. But just check for updates to make sure your Zoom client is up to date. Um, and then what you can do is I have this meeting set up. So open the meeting and it'll sign you in automatically because you're signed into Canvas. So IDP can sign you in automatically. And we can see here we have Ruth wait, was waiting in the waiting room. So you probably have experience with this, but basically you don't when you start your class, it's not going to start automatically with all your students in there. You admit them. So you don't have to admit them until you're ready to do so. Um, and I'll put my camera on there so you can see me. OK, so I can see here that um, my video is not yet not set up with the external camera. So I have to plug that in a second uh, so I can change the camera, get a nicer camera. There we go. Uh, and I will actually look at the settings here. So you can see here I can change between the integrated webcam which I was just on or um, the fancy uh, bryo camera and you can also um, change it to HD and you can see there's a bit of a difference there as well uh, and I can mirror myself let's leave it on HD it's a bit of delay there there we go uh, I can mirror myself if I want to I can touch up my appearance so that basically like softens your features a little bit. Um, and also you can adjust for low light. So if you're in a darkish room, it just adds a bit of light to it. Uh, I'll move on from there. Then if you want to, um, uh, to check your sound, basically, so you can see the microphone set up here is the, from the webcam, but you want to make sure that the microphone is the correct one that you're going to use. So I could change it to my, my PC microphone and um, then the audio is coming out of the speakers is what I'd want. So that's how I would set that up. And if you want to test it, you can just click audio settings and you can test the speaker. Now you won't be able to hear this because I'm running it through the webinar. But um, you just say, click to speaker and then you'll hear a sound come out of your own speaker and the same with the microphone. So you'll see you can see the levels there. That means that the microphone is picking up my voice and it all seems OK and it'll replay to you as well. I can hear it replaying, but you probably can't hear that. Uh, I'll move on from there. So what you would do then when you're ready to start is admit your students. And then what I would do is get them to confirm that they can hear and see me and they can use these like reaction emoticons. Hi, Ruth. Um, so Ruth, could you raise your hand if you can hear me? Oh, you're, I meant emo the emoji, but yes, thank you for raising your hand. Um, there's the loads of little different options here. You could do thumbs up or all these things. They're kind of helpful. Um, so. Or I'll move on to uh, the share screen, I think. So um, if you want to share your screen, when, if you're showing a YouTube video or something like that, what I would say is that you have to share, click share sound and that will share the sound that's on your PC and also optimize it for video clips. So that means that when you're sharing your screen and you open YouTube, it'll, hear, it'll play properly for the people. But um, I might show you a more advanced thing here that's quite helpful. If you have a video file on your computer itself, you can click on the advanced tab here, double click video, and then just select the video and it'll load up the video there. I won't show it here, but get the idea. And then I'll show you another one. Um, instead of sharing your screen where a PowerPoint is, you can actually load the PowerPoint into the session. I'll show you how that looks. So I have the PowerPoint from earlier today. So it's just loading up. And then you can see I'm just on top of the PowerPoint there and it's loading up in here and I can control it from here. And it's kind of a little bit better quality that way. You can see I'm just sharing it. And if I just stop share. And um, one other thing that's pretty useful that you can do, and I've set up before this call was uh, polls. So you've probably used polls in Zoom before 
just ask like polling questions, survey questions, but you can also use it now um, for quizzing. So you can probably see this on my screen. This is a normal poll that you would have done before and I'll launch this and get Ruth to answer the questions. And um, when Ruth answers these, it'll appear on my screen that she's, she's answered it. So Ruth, when you're ready. So we can see that Ruth likes pasta and uh, mint chocolate ice cream. So you can see that's pretty cool. But um, if I want to test Ruth, so I'm going to end that and I can share the results as well with her and then she'll see. Um, but if I want to test her, so this is quiz and I'll show you how to make it in a second. I'll move to that and I'm going to launch this quiz. And um, there, so what's the capital? to match the capital city with its country and what's the capital of Australia. Very difficult stuff. Uh, when she's finished that, we'll be able to see those answers as well. Perfect. Uh, and basically that's how that works. Um, but I will show you how you create it. So you can create it straight within the meeting. So I just click create, but then it'll open It'll open your account on Zoom um, on the web to be able to do it. So if I, I'll show you the ones I already made first. So this is my, um, my TL Zoom account um, online, and I created these ahead of time. Um, and basically what I would do is open the meeting. So if you go click meetings, uh, oh, what's that? One second. Design in again, one second. So you open the meeting and then you can add polls. So a regular poll, that's more like real time survey type things and then quiz, quiz questions. So regular poll is very simple. You just do like your multiple choice question or you know, you, they can either have multiple answers or single answers. That's basically it. That's just asking people, you know, survey type questions. But I'll go more into creating a quiz because that's really useful um, to use within class. So if you just do, okay, quiz question. And um, then there's a lot more options here. So as well as single choice and multiple choice. You can also do matching questions, rank questions, and short, short answer, long answer, fill in blank, and rating scales. Um, so I'm just going to say question, choice one, choice two, and save. And what I need to do to make it into a quiz is click this three buttons here and say make a quiz and set correct answer. So that's something you have to make sure you click. Um, and then I click save and go back into it again, click set answer and say choice one is the correct one. That's how that works. And now it's a quiz and not a poll. Uh, so if I go back into Zoom there, if I wanted to, it's already here, I can launch it. And then Ruth can pick the right answer, which she's probably already seen. Um, and that's how that works. Uh, so if we move on from that, uh, what should I cover in next, Shane, would you say? Um, I guess recording maybe. Oh yeah, recording. So I haven't set this meeting to record. So what I would have to do is make sure I click record when I want to at the start. So I just click record. You can see it comes up on the corner that I'm recording. And even if I like go down here, I'll still know that it's recording. Um, and it comes up here as well. So you just need to make sure you can see this little icon. Uh, if I want to pause at any point, I can just press pause, press play again. And when I'm finished recording, or if I, if I end the meeting, it'll stop recording. But if I wanted to stop ahead of that, I could just press stop recording and it'll go up to the cloud. And you'll generally get an email within a few minutes when uh, the court recording is up online. And it depends on how long your class is, how long that'll take. Um, but I'll show you now that all recordings will appear. If you've, if you've created them in Canvas, they'll appear in Canvas. Um, after the meeting. So you'll see here that these are ones from earlier today. They appeared within a few minutes after the recording and you can just click here and then click play and it'll open again in your Zoom account here. And um, what you can do as well is after, after class has ended, you can 
a set playback range. So if you did have stuff at the start or the end that you wanted to cut out, you can set a range, click and drag. And this is just me from a test earlier. You can click and drag the range. And then when students come in and watch it, they won't see the start part or the end part. But it, the, the only thing is the limitation is there. You couldn't chop out a bit in the middle, basically. And you can also do a thing where you um, add highlights. So Zoom itself will, the AI basically can pick out highlights um, or you can pick out highlights basically. And the, for you to do it, you just do this, click the highlights button and click and drag. So these are big highlights, but if I wanted to move them, that's what I do and those will just highlight those sections. So then when your students go in to view the session, they can click view highlights and they'll see the really important sections in your, in your um, video. Um, and I might show you as well that you can see attendance stuff in Zoom. So one second, then I'll get into that. So if I show you a meeting from earlier, so it would be in previous meetings here. Um, and that's this one, I can see, uh, how do I get to this? Um, I think through, through Zoom actually, or through Canvas. Um, yeah, yeah, it was through Canvas, sorry, from yeah. earlier. Uh, so previous meetings, we had one earlier today and I click report. That's it. Sorry. And then you can see Ruth kindly was in the meeting earlier today and you can see who, who attended. So that's really helpful for you to track if your students attended the class and also how long they attended the class. So you can see Ruth was there for 25 minutes and so was I. Um, yeah, I think that's mostly it on recordings. If there's anything else you think I should cover if there's questions. No, I think that's that's good. I think uh, I don't know if there's any questions, folks, at this stage. Um, I might just there's a couple of questions that were fielded in the room, but they're more about Canvas. I can um, I can go, Sarah. Yep, uh, I can yeah. stop sharing there one sec. Yeah, perfect. So thanks to Sarah and Ruth for for that. Um, I'm just going to bring up um, where I was here just to focus my mind. Uh, so we've done accessing uh, copying module content. Um, there was a really good question there about downloading content, which I, I think Lauren provided a link to it. Um, we'll throw that up in our knowledge race as well if it isn't there. Uh, getting set up at the cross listing bit, Zoom, which um, Sarah just went through. Um, before I go on to supports, I might just talk about a couple of questions we got here in the room. So one was making, how do you make your module self-enroll? So um, as you all probably know, it's, it's possible to make your module a self-enroll module, which means that if students, if people get the link to that module, the self-enroll link, they can actually enroll on it. Um, and that kind of, that's very useful in scenarios where you might have electives where students might not be registered for them formally yet by a banner, but that um, using the self-enroll link allows them to kind of evaluate or appraise that particular module and, um, and you know, uh, if, they're not, um, if they're not interested in it, they can be kind of removed from it again if, if needed. So it's in the settings here, you go to let students self-enroll by sharing a secret URL. And if you click on that, that'll actually, um, uh, provide you with a number of uh, options there as well. You can actually limit what that student can do as a self-enrolled student uh, if you want to. Um, and um, uh, you can basically just dictate who can do what here. Once you do that and you update it, uh, what you get is um, down on the bottom here again, you get uh, a self-enroll link. And that's actually what you share with, uh, with the students. So again, I think the most common scenarios there where you have uh, a module that's an elective and doesn't have uh, enrollments from banner you want someone to evaluate it or if you have a module that doesn't appear in banner that's maybe a manually created ban uh, module such as a cpd module or something that's for training you can use that self-enroll function rather than um, trying to get batch imports of enrollments and stuff like that there was one other one around how do I kind of undo what I've done uh, in Canvas? Is there like a back button? Is there a history button? So if I go in, um, if I go into my address bar here, now I haven't done a lot in here, so I'm not sure if it'll actually pick up. Let's maybe just try putting a, a file in here if I can find one. Um, so 
So I'll just put in that one there. Um, so if I go into my address bar, and if I go forward slash undelete, that actually gives you um, a kind of an option to restore a deleted item. So obviously it's not doing anything right now because we haven't deleted anything, but just let's try and do that and see if it works. So if I go in and um, I go to my files and maybe just delete this, um, and it kind of goes for maybe other actions as well. I'm not sure what the catalog of them are, but um, it, it is a handy one where you might have made uh, an error in deleting an assessment or, or changing an assessment. Um, so there are options there, and that's a useful one. It's like a, a kind of a history restore button. Um, there's one other thing I, we, I was discussing just off, off while you were doing that, Sarah, with the, the audience in here, and it was um, it was uh, talking of broken links. Yeah, so broken, if there was broken links in a module, what you can do is you can kind of check, um, you can validate the links in a module. So particularly if you bought in uh, content from a previous year, um, there may have been links that might have changed. So if you were linking out to external content like research papers and things like that, and if there was any change to the URL, that link might actually be broken. Um, so you can actually go into validate links and content, start link validation, and that will actually go in and it'll look at anything that's unreachable, such as links or images and so on. So that's a, a quite a handy tool as well um, uh, to, to just make sure that the, the links from, from the previous year stuff is, is okay. Um, so that probably won't show up much there actually, but uh, you know yourself, it, it, that, that, that'll help you, it'll flag the stuff that, that's, um, that's not valid. Um, and finally, oh yeah, it's kind of a simple one, but the um, um, acting as a student. So um, if you're ever in doubt about what you're seeing or not seeing as a student, uh, you can you can act as a student from um, from Canvas. So um, if I go to my um, if I go to my settings, let's go, just go into a live module here. Actually, it's the, the easiest thing. All right previously published one. Um, let's see. Acting as, am I missing something here? Lauren and Sarah, actually, this one is coming. Acting as a student. I can't see what it is off the top of my head there, Shane. Okay, uh, should be there now, let me see. We'll come back to that there, maybe it's just to do with my role here actually, I'm an admin, um, but uh, there is, <laughs> there is this typical when you're demonstrating something, there is an ability here, oh yeah, sorry, it's up here. So when you're in your units area, that's actually where you see it, so your student view up here in the top right. So the student view is where you have a kind of a, an icon with glasses. When you click on that, um, you, you'll actually see what a student sees. Um, and that's useful just to get a view of uh, the stuff you've published, the stuff you mightn't have published, and so on. So that's that one. Sorry about that. Um, and I think that was it from the room, is it? Yeah. Um, have we any questions online? Any questions from the comments or anything there, folks, before we wrap up? Um, so that's a kind of a general uh, refresher of Canvas and Zoom. We have the usual supports available. So you'll all know 24-7 uh, tier one support, but obviously uh, use the web chat as the first port to call there if you're getting onto them. If you're uh, looking for support from, from the university, which, you know, there's a pile of stuff here from the last year or two years as well, and a lot of it, it's all being updated. So you have those support guides, you have, um, you know, uh, the, the uh, YouTube channel. So this recording will be available on demand afterwards. You have our, um, our support center, uh, and also there's that Canvas Learn module. So every staff member is enrolled on the Canvas Learn module. You'll see it show up in your dashboard. So if you want to, open that it's a nice self-paced 
uh, easy going course uh, to, to go through um, the fundamentals of Canvas. And there is a student um, uh, version of that as well. So any questions? I might leave it open for uh, a minute. And um, if anyone wants to talk to us, obviously, um, you know, just email us on, on edtech at MTU. Uh, and our Twitter handle is there as well. Um, will this PDF of your slide deck be available? I can make it available if you want. Um, uh, I suppose, uh, yeah, sure, I can email it on. Uh, typically, Michael, we don't show them on the site because we, we update them, but um, I can follow up on that afterwards. Or if anyone else wants it, indeed, they can let me know. Um, not a lot in the slide deck, really. It's just a bit of um, it's just kind of welcome stuff. The majority, obviously, would be in the recording afterwards uh, for anyone that's interested. Um, so thanks for that, Michael. Um, okay, so look, I'll leave it there. Uh, the recording obviously will be available afterwards on, on YouTube. Um, and thanks very much, everybody, for coming here today as well. So we've had a, an online face-to-face uh, -face audience, uh, and it's worked quite well as a hybrid uh, learning event. So there's a number of these events happening um, in the next uh, week as well. Uh, thanks, Anne-Marie. Um, and yeah, so we'll have um more of the same but we have actually uh, a zoom new features um session specifically next, next week so that will go into kind of collaboration features like the whiteboard feature like focus mode and uh, annotation and sharing and so there's a few cool features in zoom and then the other sessions that we've done this week if you missed them will be repeated next week okay so uh thanks very much everybody um and enjoy the rest of your thursday and 